So much happened in the world of AI in the last week. I'm going to cover it all so you're caught up. And we're going to be covering robots, text to video, a new model from NVIDIA, virtual rodents, and so much more. First, text to video is exploding right now. Just when we thought Sora was the end all be all of text to video models, we now have two new text to video models that are absolutely incredible. Let me show you Luma AI first. This is Dream Machine, and it allows you to do text to video or image to video. And look at these examples here. Now, look at the detail in these videos. They are absolutely Absolutely gorgeous and I've noticed a little bit of morphing but for the most part the physics are fairly consistent through the videos here's an example of what it looks like when it's actually rendering you can get up to 120 seconds there we go very beautiful here are some more examples now in this one I want to show you right here you could see the balloons morph from what looks like a person, then he's carrying them, and then they kind of go behind these other people in the background. So definitely still some mistakes, but I believe Sora has a lot of these mistakes as well. Here's a cool Pixar character. Here's something that looks like it's from Harry Potter, maybe. We have something realistic right here. Dream Machine understands how people, animals, and objects interact with the physical world, AKA a world model. I mean, the people in these examples look incredibly real. This one is especially impressive with so much detail, so much physics going on. And here are some current limitations. Morphing, so you could see this Porsche is actually morphing forwards and backwards. It's pretty interesting. And and it looks like it's morphing from kind of a brand new Porsche to an older version, an older year Porsche. Very cool. Movement, still a little bit broken. You can see the Corgi's legs are not moving at all. Text, struggles with, but most text to video, text to image products struggle with text. And something called Janus, which I've never heard of that, but yeah, basically the polar bear is uh, coming out of its rear end here. But overall, really, really impressive. And there's a ton of examples on Twitter of people trying it out. You could try it out for free right now. But not to be done, the company that really started the text to video revolution and we haven't heard from in a long time, Runway just announced the third version of their product, and it is incredible. So thanks to Alvera Cintas for putting these together. Runway just announced their new AI video generation model called Gen 3 Alpha. Look at these 10 examples. Bald men is happy to have a new wig. Okay, the person looks real. The wig comes down. The hair's physics are nearly flawless. I see a little artifact coming off. Watch when the wig comes down. You can see a tiny little artifact fly off to the left side here. There, but very minor. Overall, incredibly impressive. Here is a dragon toucan walking through the Serengeti. Again, very impressive, very consistent. All the plants in the background look good. Here is first person view, internal locomotive cab of a train moving at hyperspeed in an old European city. Very nice. I think one thing I'm slightly noticing is that the power cables that are hung up right here kind of go in and out, but otherwise, all of the physics of the architecture look really good, really consistent. Here's one subtle reflection of a woman on the window of a train moving at hyperspeed in a Japanese city. This is a direct comparison to Sora's version of this. And in fact, I'm gonna play them side by side so you can see it. Which one do you think is better? Next, a wide symmetrical shot of a painting in a museum. The camera zooms in close to the painting. Very nice, very, very nice. Here is handheld camera moving fast, flashlight light in a white old wall in a old alley at night, a black graffiti that spells runway. And here's one that works really well for my channel, an astronaut running through an alley in Rio de Janeiro. Yeah, so look at even the kind of luggage bags on his stomach area. They move around and it looks completely real. Everything in the windows moves by and looks correct physically. Here is a view out a window of a giant strange creature walking in runway city at night. One single street lamp dimly lighting the area. Very, very cool. Here's another one. Close up shot of a young woman driving a car looking thoughtful, blurred green forest visible through the rainy car window. And all of the trees are consistent. I mean, this is just super, super impressive. There's definitely a little bit of uncanny valley with the person driving, but overall, I think it looks really good. And then finally, a first person view shot zooming through a tunnel into a vibrant underwater space. Lots going on here. A lot of consistency necessary. Very, very good. So I cannot wait to try these out. Text to video and specifically Sora has significant competition now coming from 
multiple different companies. And one thing that I haven't seen a lot of is open source text to video models. In fact, I don't know if I know of any. Even if there were some, they would probably only be a few seconds long. So I'm really hoping an open source text to video model comes out that is competitive with everything we're seeing from these closed source companies. So for the rest of the stories, Brett Adcock, the founder of Figure Robotics, who is making an incredible robot, who I've made multiple videos about, has put together a list of all the biggest AI news to come out in the last week. So let's just take a look. Now, first, obviously, Apple had their big announcement. I've covered it already. I'll link the link to that video in the description below. One of the coolest features is, of course, calculator app on iPad, but more importantly, you can now just draw a math formula, draw equals, and then it will automatically solve that problem for you. Apple and OpenAI announced a partnership to directly integrate ChatGPT into iOS 18, iPad OS 18, and Mac OS. Now, there seems to be a deep misunderstanding about what was actually announced, so I wanna clarify it real quick. And in fact, I posted something on X specifically about this. I'm a huge fan of the All In podcast and all of the besties on it. And I was listening to the latest episode over the weekend and was kind of blown away by how this group of hyper successful entrepreneurs, incredibly brilliant people, got the facts wrong of Apple's AI announcements. And here I actually talk about it. You got the facts wrong about Apple intelligence on this week's episode of All In. And here's the confusion. A lot of people and the All In podcast included just thought OpenAI was powering everything and that there was this huge security concern and even Elon Musk tweeted about it and he misunderstood what was going on. So here's the breakdown. Apple did develop their own AI. They have a 3 billion parameter model that is run locally. That is the beauty of the Apple Silicon. It is incredibly powerful at running local inference. So you have this 3 billion parameter model that is essentially powering things that you wanna get done on your phone. It's kind of powering Siri. And you can actually accomplish tasks with AI. Then for any larger tasks or more complex tasks, they have a private cloud service that they offload requests and inference to when necessary. This cloud service, which has a large model, much larger than 3 billion parameters, is also owned and operated and created by Apple completely. OpenAI has nothing to do with it. Now, where OpenAI actually comes into play is if you have world knowledge questions, meaning who won the election in 1996, or how do I tie my shoes, whatever it is. These general world knowledge questions, when you ask it, Apple will then prompt you and say, hey, we're gonna ping ChatGPT about this, do you wanna do that? So it actually confirms before sending the prompt off to ChatGPT, so it is little more than just an API call. Everybody's saying that it's deeply integrated into the OS, it's just not true. In fact, I believe that's why the stock ripped so much in the following days after the announcement because a lot of the market realized that first, a lot of what they announced is awesome, but also they are not as dependent on OpenAI as a lot of the reports are saying they are. So here's an example question. You type to Siri, I have fresh salmon, lemons, tomatoes, help me plan a five course meal with a dish for each taste bud. So this is what would be considered a world knowledge question. Now, if you were to ask it something like, I need to text my mom and tell her I'm gonna be late, or can you take this email and summarize it for me and then put that summary into an email to somebody else, that is what Apple's local inference would do. But as soon as you have this world knowledge question, it's going to ask if you want to send it to ChatGPT, like so. Here we go. So do you want me to use ChatGPT to do that? Sending to ChatGPT, and there we go. And this is ChatGPT's answer. So I am very bullish on Apple AI. I was very impressed with what they announced. They were obviously quite conservative with their announcements and what the functionality actually accomplishes. But what I believe is the need of asking questions that are world knowledge is actually quite limited, maybe a couple times a day. But having AI that can actually accomplish tasks and is super personal to me and accomplishes tasks on my behalf is gonna be needed all day, every day. That is going to make humans super productive, hyper productive. And so that, in my mind, is actually much more valuable. The local model that they are running on the phone is much more valuable than the ChatGPT API call that they're sending off. Next, on Friday, NVIDIA released their own model, a huge 340 billion parameter model called 
Nemetron 4 340B, and it's a family of models optimized for NVIDIA NEMO and NVIDIA Tensor RT LLM, includes cutting edge instruct and reward models, and a data set for generative AI training. Now, what this model was made for is to teach smaller models, and it is open source. Obviously, you can run inference, I believe, in their NIMS product, but if you wanted to download it, you totally can. And again, its purpose is to generate synthetic data to train smaller models. This might be a huge breakthrough for smaller model training and actually allows a lot of companies that didn't have access to data beyond what is on the public web to actually compete. So for example, OpenAI is paying a ton of companies, including Reddit, to get their proprietary data. But now, if you can generate all of this synthetic data, that could be really powerful. So I haven't tested it out. I'm really excited to. You know I'm going to make a video about it. So let me know specifically what you want to see about Nemetron. Next, researchers from Stanford introduce Human Plus, a shadowing ability of robots. Humanoids are born for using human data. We build a real-time shadowing system for using a single RGB camera and a whole body policy for cloning human motion. And here's some examples, boxing, playing the piano, ping pong, tossing, typing, and completely open source. Thank you, Stanford. And so here's a great example of it. And remember, all of this is just a clone of something a human did. And they actually detail some of the specifics of the robot. So they're using Inspire Robots hands. They're using Unitree Robotics H1 robot body. They're using the Dynamixel motors and Razer webcams and completely open source hardware design as well. So the RGB camera takes a video, somebody does something, it does the body and hand pose estimation, then they convert it into what the robot would look like, and then they actually make the robot do the behavior. Very cool. Next, DeepMind and Harvard created a virtual rodent powered by an AI neural network. And let's take a look at this video. With deep reinforcement learning, it learned to operate a biomechanically accurate rat model, allowing us to compare real and virtual neural activity. So, so cool. This is essentially a simulated rat. And so if we could do a rat, if we scale up, what do you think is gonna be next? And the cool thing about this is it's literally predicting the neural behavior of the rat and using AI. So it is, again, another step towards a fully simulated world. Next, OpenAI announced that Paul M. Nakasone brings world-class cybersecurity expertise to OpenAI's board of directors. So this is a retired US Army general joining the board of directors on OpenAI. Now they are framing it as being a cybersecurity expert, and that's why he's joining. But I think a lot of people lost trust in OpenAI, as I did, kind of, and I see it more as potentially regulatory capture. So what I'm thinking is they're getting deep into the security establishment. So the NSA, the army, the military in general, and uh, yeah, this is just more regulatory capture in my mind. And I also read something recently that OpenAI has something like a 40 person team specifically dedicated to lobbying Washington. So this is just kind of more of the same in my mind. And I also read that Sam Altman is considering converting OpenAI into a completely for-profit company, not run by a nonprofit entity. Of course, nobody is surprised at that though. And I think if OpenAI continues down this path, they are just gonna lose the trust of everybody. But at the same time, they're the only AI company making significant revenue in the billions. So maybe I'm wrong. At the end of the day, if their models are the best, probably 90% of the world doesn't care about anything else they do. Next, Stability AI released Stable Diffusion 3 Medium. I've tested it out. It's okay. I was thinking about creating a tutorial for how to get it set up on your machine, but there's a lot out there. Plus, it's not that great. I haven't found it to be really mind-blowing at all. Again, if you want to see it, just let me know in the comments. If I get enough people asking, of course I'll make it. Next, out of Japan, we have a new approach to autonomous vehicles, and it is humanoids actually just driving them. The vehicle is a standard vehicle, but the humanoid robot in it is actually looking around, interpreting what it needs to do and driving the vehicle. And they have a full research paper that they published about it. I recommend you check it out. And last, and I believe I'm gonna make an entire video just about this, DeepSeek Coder V2 is 
out. Deep Sea Coder was one of the best coding models out there, and now they have the brand new open source V2 version, and it beats GPT-4 Turbo in coding and math. If we take a look at the stats in the striped blue line here across the board, we can see that it beats out GPT-4 Turbo, Gemini 1.5 Pro, Claude 3 Opus, Llama 370B, and CodeStroll. This is the top of the top. These are all of the best coding models out there. And Deep Sea Coder V2 beats them at Human Eval, MBPP Plus, Math, GSMAK, and then on the actual coding framework side, Ader, Live Code Bench, and SWE Bench. But on Live Code Bench and SWE Bench, it does come in under the others. But Ader, in my opinion, is the best right now. I'm actually going to make another video about Ader, a follow-up video soon, so stay tuned for that. But just look at its performance. It is so impressive. It excels in coding and math, supports 338 programming languages, has 128K context length, fully open source with two sizes, 230 billion parameters, which is humongous, but it also comes with API access and a smaller 16 billion parameter version. So definitely check it out. Stay tuned for my video on this model. I can't wait to test it out. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.